Hey, good evening, everyone. This is Steve KF5J. I hope everyone's doing okay out there this evening. So today's video, I wanted to kind of go back and review some things on uh, setting up local 2-meter FM and C4 FM nets. Um, I've done a couple of videos before, but I kind of want to go over a couple of ideas, particularly for the new, new, new hams out there, to kind of give you some ideas and things to look at. One of the things uh, is generating club interest, advertising regular events, uh, common frequencies for 2 meter FM and C4 FM, typical station setup. I'll kind of go through my station real quick and show you what it looks like. Uh, running low power, which is what I pretty much do all the time now on VHF and UHF, and of course updating your QRZ page and some additional uh, resources. One of the things I find pretty interesting is I what I like to do is I like to go through and I like to create these uh, Facebook posts. And what a lot of times what happens is your some of the clubs that you'll find have uh, Facebook pages. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go through <coughs> and I'll sponsor like a, a Simplex Net or a C4FM Net or so, something unique uh, that gives folks an opportunity to uh, to get on the air. So these are some of the posts that I've done, just to kind of give you an example of what, you know, we've done some the various things here with, with uh, going in with 2 meter simplex, some, some C4 FM stuff. So this is, this is, this is a way to, uh, you know, generate interest. Locate your local clubs. Uh, our local club here, this is their web page, and one of the clues that you want to look for is uh, most web pages will have a repeater frequency right here, and this one here is our primary repeater frequency. So this is a good place to start. And also, uh, the other place, the other uh, thing that you can do is look for events uh, such as testing, VE testing, they call it. Where you go in and you test up for you know uh, general or amateur extra. The, these are good events to go in and meet new folks and uh, make contacts and so forth. Because you you know that that's those they all have the same interests and, and and that's a good idea to try to you know locate your local club and look for you know uh, test events like this here. Um, Here's a, another article they had on one of the tests they did, and of course, club meetings and things like that. So these are all things to look for. This is another club in Richardson. Um, this one is uh, uh, one of the areas here I was going to show you right here under the activities tab is uh, they've got all of these different uh, activities here, and you can find like, you know, nets and so forth. So this is, these are things that you can do. But what I was going to show you here is, this is the primary repeater frequency. So a lot of times on these clubs, what you can do is you can just go in and get on their primary repeater and start calling out and making contacts. So that's, that's, that's a good place to start is look at your clubs and, you know, the primary repeaters. So the, that's, that's where you want to start. C4 FM is a popular mode that uh, Yesu has, and uh, I've tried to promote it a lot here in the Abilene area. So uh, one of the things uh, I'm going to promote is uh, all the uh, C4 FM users or Yesu uh, use the um, unofficial frequency of 145.562.500. That is a frequency that uh, Yesu has pretty much kind of unofficially set up as a C4 FM frequency, so uh, that's something to uh, promote in your area because C4 FM is pretty cool for the for the Yesu users. Uh, if you have an FTM 300, uh, you may have to take an additional step to get into the uh, 145.562.500, and this screen right here kind of shows you uh, on the FTM 300, you'll have to go in and you'll have to uh, go through this process here uh, to get to the uh, 6.25 step, and that instructions are here on how to do it. So on the FT991A, you can directly program in 145.562.5000, but on your FTM 300s, your FTD 3Ds, and so forth, some of the radios, you're going to have to locate this step step. 
uh, menu which is located under the config and you just need to change it to 6.25 and it will allow you to dial in this frequency exactly so if you get an FTM 300 or 3D and you can't get there this is how you do it you go into this uh, config menu and go to the step setting and then you'll be good to go this is the FM uh, configuration that we normally use 146 440 so one of the things uh, my station setup is essentially pretty simple. It's an FT991A. I've got three foot of coax going to a Diamond SX40C, and then I've got another 20 feet of uh, LMR400 cable that goes to my GP3. And I pretty much exclusively run 5 watts. The coax I've changed out uh, recently on my uh, FM antenna setup was uh, I went with the DX Engineering 400. Uh, and this here, I purchased a 25 foot section, and that's all I need here. Uh, but you can get it in 50 and 100 feet. But this is some really, really good coax, really, really good quality connectors. These connectors right here that you see uh, from DX Engineering, these are all very very high quality connector so uh, I was very very happy with this uh, with this coax uh, the other spec particularly was was interest to me was the uh, the DB loss here's only 1.8 DB at 100 feet and since I'm only running 25 feet that's just almost nothing um, as far as DB loss goes and I can tell you the signal and the, the receive quality is just absolutely amazing Here's the GP3 antenna that I use here. This is just a great little antenna. I mean, it does a wonderful job. It's simple. You just put it up on the pole, and it just does its job. Very, very good job. This is the uh, meter I use, uh, the SWR meter. I keep my meter in line all the time. I will tell you this. There is a low power and a high power switch right here. Uh, I'm trying to point to it right there. So you want to make sure uh, one, one range is 0 to 30 and one is 0 to 300. So you want to make sure you're in the right range. But I use this uh, in low range and always 5 watts. This is the specifications on it here. Yeah, 0 to 30, right? Uh, yeah, the, the, t the two ranges are 0 to 30 and 0 to 300. This is the SWR performance on it. It's actually really good. Uh, just, just a wonderful antenna. This is my power supply. One thing I will tell you here, when you purchase this power supply, it comes configured for 230 volts, so you have to take a jumper and convert it to 115. But, uh, and of course, it uses the uh, Anderson power pole connectors, which uh, is just great. Uh, it's, it's a really, really good, uh, good fit, uh, fit there. And those are the Anderson power poles right there. So running low power, I ex pretty much exclusively run low power now. I used to run 50 watts FM, UHF, VHF, but I realized that I can talk 5 watts. And this is kind of give you a uh, an overview. Uh, these green dots you see here, uh, uh, see here, the, these guys right here, this is a contact I've had out here 22 miles. These are contacts over here. Uh, this is 12 miles. I've got some guys down here around 5 or 6 miles. I've talked to a guy in the mobile up here. No, oh, wait, <laughs> he's right here. Uh, 22, oh, almost 28 miles. He was in a mobile one time and he was up there by Albany and uh, I was able to reach him. So I think I had to go to 50 watts to get out of here. But everything you see within this radius here, 5 watts. 5 watts is all you need. You don't really need to run full power. And the, be the benefit of it is if you're not running full power, then you're not, you know, putting a heavy duty cycle on your power supply or your radio. Um, and that's great because that's less heat and less heat means a uh, lo lo longer lifetime. <laughs> all right. 
Last thing is uh, for you new guys, update your QRZ page. Go into QRZ. You you all you automatically get a QRZ uh, listing when you become a ham radio operator. And one of the things you should do is go in and update things like your information and so forth, your your antennas, some of the things you like to do and so forth. Because a QRZ page is a really good way to start, uh, you know, going back and forth and and getting information out. This is more for information. And lastly, I've got a couple of videos that I've done in the past to generate C4FM interest, uh, programming FM simplex frequencies and things like that. And I'll post all these videos in the uh, body of this email here or this uh, video. Uh, programming repeaters, my mobile setup and so forth. So the ideal here is just, just kind of give you something that you can, uh, you know, for you new guys, this is these are just some ideas to get in the hobby, find a club, find local nets, get on their Facebook page, post an event. You know, if you want to get on there and just say, hey, I want to have a, uh, a informal net tonight, uh, just just do it. Just pick a frequency, 146, 440 or something, and do it, and uh, you you'll be you'll be surprised. Uh, hams will actually join you. And what I'll do here, let me double click on this real quick here. This is my QRZ page. And basically, you know, you, you go through and you just show everything because this is kind of like a Facebook page, if you will. This gives everyone a, a, a picture of what you like to do and so forth, uh, different various videos, things like speech processors and things. And, of course, there's my GP3 antenna uh, right there. So, anyway, I hope this helps. This is just uh, ideas to try to get new hams on the air. You know, you got your license, so you're a little nervous, you're not sure what to do. Well, this is just give you something to kind of, you know, go through and say, hey, this this is uh, this is how you want to do it. You want to go through and essentially, you know, look for look for web pages, interests, events, and things like that. Set up some some simplex nets. Try to promote FM and C4 FM and things of that nature. So, anyway, hope this helps. Thanks again from KI5JUF.